watching CNBC TV 18 News Reel. I'm Arshna Sarangi. Let's get started with a cover story. The draft of the proposed Uniform Civil Code for Uttarakhand is complete and would soon be submitted to the state government. Former Supreme Court Judge Justice Ranjana Prakash Desai, who heads the committee, said that marriage acts of various religions, prevalent personal laws, law commission reports and uncodified issues have all been studied and considered. Remember, the BJP had promised the implementation of UCC in its last assembly elections in Uttarakhand. In fact, Prime Minister Modi recently made a strong push for a uniform civil code, asking how can the country function with different laws. The Karnataka High Court has rejected Twitter's plea, challenging directions of the centre to remove some tweets and accounts. The court also imposed 50 lakh rupees cost on Twitter, citing its conduct. It also refused Twitter's request to stay the operation of the order. The case was about 10 blocking orders issued by the government to the social media company. The court ruled that Twitter's plea was devoid of any merit. Justice Dixit said he's convinced by the government's stance that it not only has the power to block tweets, but can also block accounts. The case was closely tracked, with many experts seeing this as a challenge to freedom of expression. It also highlighted the company's relationship with the government. Just last week, Elon Musk, the new owner of uh, Twitter, met Prime Minister Modi in New York. Speaking to the media, Musk said that Twitter has no option but to obey government's orders. Stock markets uh, shattered records once again. The Sensex gained over 800 points and has moved within touching distance of 65,000 mark. The Nifty gained over 200 points to end comfortably above the 19,000 mark. Nifty Bank and Nifty Midcap Index also ended at record highs. Amar intense speculation, N. Biren Singh has clarified on Twitter that he will not be stepping down as a chief minister of Manipur. Earlier in the day, a crowd had gathered in front of his official residence in Imphal and had blocked the convoy in which he was travelling to meet the governor. Hundreds of women protesters formed a human chain saying they did not want him to quit, insisting on stability and continuity in leadership. Meanwhile, Congress leader Rahul Gandhi, who's in Manipur, said that it was heartbreaking to see and listen to the plight of those affected by the violence. He visited the victims who have been displaced by the ethnic strife at Churachantu. He also met with the state's governor and said that he wants peace to be restored in the state. Remember, ethnic violence in Manipur have claimed more than 100 lives in the last two months. The Amadni Party has filed a petition in the Supreme Court seeking an immediate stay on the central government's Delhi ordinance, saying it sidelines the elected government from controlling over its civil services. The Delhi government said the centre's ordinance shows contempt for the elected government while making a pretense of their involvement through the chief minister. The centre brought an ordinance on May 19 to curtail the power of Delhi's elected government. The ordinance was promulgated days after the Supreme Court handed over control of services in Delhi to the elected government, excluding police, public order and land. The centre has rolled out schemes to incentivize manufacturing of electrolyzers and green hydrogen. This comes ahead of the government's three-day global conference on green hydrogen in Delhi. And speaking of green hydrogen, the World Bank has sanctioned a $1.5 billion loan to finance India's low energy carbon program. In a press statement, the organization said it aims to help the government execute its green hydrogen plans and scale up its renewable energy projects. Artificial sweetener aspartame used in diet sodas and other sugar-free products is set to be declared as a possible carcinogen. According to Reuters, it's most likely to be declared a possible carcinogenic or cancer-causing element next month by WHO's cancer research agency IARC. Now, WHO has four levels of classification, carcinogenic, probably carcinogenic, possibly carcinogenic and not classifiable. Now, this sweetener is going to fall in the third category. For the third night in a row, France's streets were engulfed in rioting in response to the deadly police shooting of a 17-year-old boy. According to French Interior Minister, 667 people have been detained as curfews were imposed in many towns. According to reports, half of the arrests were made in the Paris area alone. The officer who allegedly shot the teenager is in custody. Remember, in Paris, shops have been ransacked and cars were set on fire despite a heavy police presence. Crisis in Pakistan has reached a staff level agreement with the International Monetary Fund over $3 billion of funding. The deal, which still needs to be approved by the Global Lenders Board, comes after an eight-month delay. Pakistan is facing its worst economic crisis since independence. 
The country's central bank raised its main interest rate to a record high of 22% on Monday to help secure the deal. Oscar-winning actor Kevin Spacey is presently on trial in London on 12 counts of sexual assault against four men. A four-week trial is scheduled for the 63-year-old celebrity. Spacey has been released on unconditional bail since his initial court appearance in Britain last year. In addition to numerous instances of indecent and sexual assault, Spacey is accused of compelling someone to engage in penetrative sexual conduct without their consent, which is a far more serious offence. All right, it's time for our moment of the day. Prime Minister Modi took a metro ride to Delhi University. We leave you with these visuals. Have a great weekend.